Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have this Azure Beauty Dip Powder Kit I'm going to be trying out. Um, and just a little disclaimer, I had this sitting on my floor and I have plants like on my windowsill and it was below my windowsill. So I accidentally got some water on it and I think I didn't realize it. So there are like watermarks here. So I do apologize for that. Um, I have had this for a while, honestly, um, and I never got around to filming a video, um, but I'm really excited. I don't think I have made a video with Azure Beauty products on my YouTube channel before, so let's unbox this and see everything that is in the dip powder kit, and then I will do some nails using their products. So as you can see, I have already unboxed this and right here was a little cup container type thing to do your dip nails over so it would catch the dip powder. And I already have used that so that's why it's not in here, but that's what that was. So next we have a yellow buffing block and it looks like I've used this and the file already. But here's the buffing block and then we have I think this is a 100, 180 grit file. The last tool we have in here is a brush to use to brush off the excess dip powder when doing the dip powder nails. So that will definitely come in handy. I'll just take it out so you guys can see it more up close. We have steps one through four. So this is the first one. Step one is the base coat. They are in plastic bottles and they're all 10 milliliter. So I'm just gonna open this up if you would like to see the brush. So the brush is pretty small. Step two is the activator. Step three, top coat. I personally like using gel polish top coat on my dip powder nails, so I probably won't be using this today. Last step, step four is the brush saver. So if your other brushes from the other liquid bottles ever get kind of dirty or they, the bristles start sticking together from the dip powder or anything like that, um, this brush saver will help. I won't be using it in today's video, but basically you just take the brush out of any of these bottles and you stick it in here and you let it sit for a little bit and then it should save your brush. Now on to the fun part, the dip powder colors. Unfortunately, I don't think I have time to swatch all of them, but I will be opening each bottle up so you guys can see the color inside. But just know that once you apply them to your nails, they will be darker than what they look like in the bottle. I love the color variety. There's some darker, lighter colors, neons some browns and glitters, even some metallics. So let's take a look at these colors. I am going to go ahead and get into the nail set now. So we're starting with some nail prep. So first pushing back my cuticles. I am using this wooden cuticle pusher today and just making sure to push back all of those cuticles. You can also scrape off the dead skin that is around your cuticle and that will help the Gelex nails stay on 
longer. Oh yeah, I don't think I even mentioned I am doing gel X nails. So I'm doing dip powder over gel X nails. Um, but anyways, I went ahead and pushed back those cuticles and then I am taking the buffing block and buffing all of my nails. This will basically just roughen up the nail bed and make it so the Gel X glue it sticks on better. And even if you're just doing dip powder nails um, and not Gel X nails, like you're doing dip powder on your natural nails or something, it's still very important to push back cuticles and buff. And all these nail prep steps are very important. And by the way, my puppy is playing. So um, sorry about that if you can hear him. The next step is dehydrator. I'm using the Model 1's dehydrator and just applying that to all of my natural nails. But it's totally fine if you don't have a dehydrator because acetone or rubbing alcohol basically does almost the same thing. So you can use those as dehydrators as well. And um, that will just kind of get rid of your natural oils in your nails. I am going to be using the Betty Cora Medium Almond Full Cover Nail Tips today. So I am just sizing out my nails and seeing which ones fit my nails the best. And if I'm in between sizes, I am going to opt for the larger one rather than the smaller one. Just because we can always make it smaller by filing it down. And it's not really good to have a too small of nail because that can cause nail damage or it might just pop off right away. I did actually have to file all of them down because none of them fit my natural nail perfectly, but that is usually the case. So I'm just filing down wherever it doesn't fit my natural nail. And once you are done filing, the full cover nail tips should fit your natural nail sidewall to sidewall. To apply my Gel X nails today, I am going to be using the Betty Cora 8-in-1 Nail Glue Gel just because I thought since I was using their full cover nail tips, I might as well just use their glue gel as well. And it also does work pretty well. So I'm starting with my thumbnail and I'm just applying the gel glue onto the full cover nail tip where I estimate my natural nail is going to touch the full cover nail tip. Plus I'm putting a little bit of extra at the bottom of the nail tip around the cuticle area. Now that I have the glue applied, I'm going to apply it to my natural nail now. So what I like to do to prevent air bubbles is I start with the cuticle area and then I slowly bring the full cover nail tip down until it is completely on my natural nail. And I do like to do this pretty close to the nail lamp so that once I have it where I want the nail to be, I can just put it in to the nail lamp to cure right away because it is pretty easy to accidentally move it around if you're kind of far away from the nail lamp. Also, it's important to make sure you didn't accidentally get any gel on your skin before curing, but if there is, you can simply wipe it up with acetone and a micro brush or something like that. I also make sure there's no air bubbles before curing. I also did want to mention that I'm just flash curing in this mini lamp for about 15 to 20 seconds. And then after I have all the nails applied, I will fully cure in a larger lamp. So I'm just going to repeat these steps on all the rest of my nails. And then we will get into using the dip powder. And I'll probably speed it up a little bit so it doesn't take up too much time. So here I am just fully curing my nails in the larger lamp and now I'm just going to file the nail tips just a little bit. I just wanted the tips to be rounded a little bit more 
um, just so they're not like super pointy. But if you want your nails shorter or you would like to change the shape of your nails, now would be a good time to do so. This next step is optional, but ever since I have tried it out, I have really liked it and I think it look makes the nails look a lot better. So basically, I am taking some acetone and a micro brush and going around the cuticle area of the full cover nail tip. And this is just going to kind of dissolve the nail a little bit and make it thinner around the cuticle area. This is just going to make the nails look even more seamless so there's not like a bump or anything where the cuticle of the nail is. And you can also do this same thing using a file, but I personally think acetone is way easier. Next, I'm just buffing the shine off the full cover nail tips. This is usually an optional step. I wasn't sure if I should do it or not, but, but I thought I might as well just in case because it can prevent the dip powder from peeling or chipping. Um, I know when I do gel nails, I usually don't do this step because I don't have an issue with the gel peeling off, but if you do have an issue with chipping or peeling on full cover nail tips and you don't buff the full cover nail tips, I would definitely recommend try and buffing them and see if that helps. Now on to the dip powder application. I am just going to be using colors 463, which is this light blue, and color 550, which is this glittery clear. For any glittery gel polishes, I would recommend stirring it around because usually the glitter isn't evenly distributed throughout the whole bottle. Um, so I just stirred it around with a cuticle pusher. I'm going to be attempting some ombre. There are a few different ways you can do this with dip powder, but I just chose the method that looked the easiest to me. So I'm starting out on applying step one, which is the base coat, and you will want to work fairly quickly because it will dry eventually and then the dip powder won't stick on if it's dry. So to do the ombre, I decided to use a brush. So I'm going to dust the blue dip powder on the tip of my nail and then right after that I'm going to dip my full nail into the clear glitter gel polish or not the gel polish the dip powder and yes this does get very messy just because these dip powder bottles are so small they always overfill when I dip my nails into them if you don't want that you can prevent that by just scooping the dip powder out and then pouring it over your nail so I waited around 30 to 45 seconds just to make sure the first coat was completely dry before I dust off the excess dip powder. But after it was dry, I dusted off the excess dip powder and I am going to do that two more times, so three coats in all. I am applying the base coat over my nail once again and then I'm just going to apply the blue dip powder using the brush to the tip of my nail and then dip the whole nail into the glitter dip powder just like I did last time. Then I waited a little bit to make sure it was completely dry and then used a different brush to dust off the excess dip powder and then I'm going to do that one more time on the thumbnail and then move on to the next nail. So for my index fingernail, I wanted to try a different method for the ombre and in the end, the method I used for the thumbnail worked way better and looked a lot better, but I just wanted to try this one out just to see. So I applied the base coat over my whole nail, but this time instead of using the brush, I decided to dip my nail into the blue dip powder just like the tip of my nail where I wanted the blue to be. And then the second coat, I dipped it in again, but just not as far, if that makes sense. And this created harsh lines instead of ombre, which I feel like I kind of knew that would happen, but I just wanted to try it out, I guess. 
Um, but in the end, after like putting the stickers on and everything, you couldn't really tell. As you can see now, for the third coat, I realized that wasn't a really good idea, so I went back to the brush method. And I also did that same method that I did on my thumbnail for the rest of my nails since that one seemed to work the best. I feel like my pinky nail and my thumbnail turned out the best ombre wise but I'm still pretty happy with how everything turned out considering it was my first time doing ombre dip powder nails but I was just kind of learning as I went and I feel like next time I do ombre dip powder nails I'll be able to do it a lot better just because I know what method works and what doesn't. I am now going in with step two and this is the activator. This is going to harden the dip powder and if anything is bumpy or uneven, don't worry about that too much because we can file it after applying the activator which I will show in a little bit. So I'm just applying the activator over all of my nails and it does dry fairly quickly so you don't really have to wait very long. Now to make everything smooth or if there's any bumpy spots, I am going in with my 100-180 grit file and filing all my nails. I also definitely could have used my e-file because that would have been quicker, but I guess I wasn't really thinking about it and I already had the file out. I also did some filing off camera, so I was filing for a pretty good amount of time, but it's definitely worth it because it makes them look so much better. I am also going to be using my buffer to buff all of my nails. Since the file is more rough than the buffer, the buffer is going to smooth it out even more.
Now before I do the top coat, I am going to be doing the nail art first. I'm not going to do any hand painted nail art today. I am just going to be using stickers, nail charms, and rhinestones. So first I have this sticker sheet with planets, stars, and some butterflies on it. Super pretty. I thought it would go really well with the blue on my nails. So I'm just starting out with some planets and stars and I really like when sticker sheets, nail sticker sheets are clear because you can kind of see what it will look like before you put the sticker on. So that's what I was kind of doing here and I'm just using my tweezers to get the stickers off and I'm just doing that on my index fingernail, my ring fingernail, and my pinky, and the middle and thumbnail, I am going to put charms on those. So I'm just going to finish up with the stickers and then we will get into the charms. I do apologize if I ever get out of the frame. I was paying attention to applying the stickers and I wasn't really paying attention to the camera and staying in frame. So I am sorry about that. So I got out my nail charm box and I was kind of looking for something to match the stickers or go with the stickers. So I found this planet nail charm that I'm going to apply to my thumbnail. And then I have this star nail charm I will apply to my middle fingernail. I'm going to be using the Betty Cora 8-in-1 Nail Glue Gel once again to apply these nail charms. And after I was done with my nails, I showed them to my boyfriend and he was like, that nail charm is going to fall off right away. And I was like, no it's not. This nail glue is really good. And I am now doing this voiceover on Wednesday. I did my nails on Saturday and this nail charm is still on the there. So it's really good guys. It's a really good nail glue. So I applied those nail charms where I wanted them to be and I just had to hold them in place in the nail lamp. So I cured those and now I'm going to do some rhinestones on the nails that have stickers. So I'm using these really tiny rhinestones, the smallest ones that I have, and I'm going to be using the Betty Cora rhinestone glue. So this nail glue is in a tube so it's a lot easier to use with rhinestones because you only need a really tiny amount with rhinestones unless you have like a really big rhinestone but in my case I'm using really small rhinestones so I just need a small amount of glue so this nail glue will help a lot to not get too much glue plus it's a little bit thicker I think than the other nail glue so um, it kind of helps apply the rhinestones better. I am also using my rhinestone picker to pick up the rhinestones because tweezers would just be way more difficult so I definitely recommend a rhinestone picker if you don't have one. going to be using the Model 1's shiny top coat and I'm going to go around the nail charms with the top coat. This will also help the nail charm stay in place a little bit more. And for the rhinestones and the stickers, I am just going to go right over the top of them and that will make sure the rhinestones and stickers stay on. And of course you can just use an air dry top coat since this is dip powder, but like I said, I prefer a gel top coat, so that is what I chose to do.
Last but not least, I'm just applying some cuticle oil. I really love how this nail set turned out. I feel like it's pretty different compared to what I usually do, but I really like it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye, guys!